Hey, and welcome to another installment of Catching Up. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Jake. I'm Josh. And we're back post Turkey Day, post Black Friday, post all that shit into I guess December now. Long December, as the Counting Crows would uh, would say. This is my December, as Lincoln Park would say. Yeah, that was a that was a non album single. Yeah. Uh, though they had a remix of it on the reanimation compilation. Mm-hmm. But uh, you guys have a good Thanksgiving, good you know Black Friday weekend. I know you guys were all working and stuff. I mean, I guess uh, it ended up being all right. I had had lunch plans with one of my co. Well, to uh, step back, my parents uh, and uh, both my sisters were all doing their own thing. Uh, most of them out of town, and I was stuck kind of being here working. Uh, so I uh, had like tentative plans for the entire day. I was originally supposed to have lunch with one of my new coworkers at the theater. And then at the last minute, he wasn't able to do it because his like dog got sick or something like that, had to run to the vet. Uh, so I ended up just running over to the supermarket, which was still open, and buying a frozen pizza. And that's what I ended up having for my uh, lovely Thanksgiving lunch. And then uh, Sam and Jake, you guys were able to come by uh, after you guys were done with your respect for, uh, respective uh, Thanksgiving lunches. And we hung out, which was fun. But you knew that we did that. <laughs> Uh, but now you guys at home do too. Yeah, we had. I had <laughs> for Thanksgiving dinner. I had a Seven Eleven quarter pound big bite. Had a uh, brat, Johnsonville brat. Yeah. How about you guys? Well, I hung out with uh, you guys. Um, <laughs> and Did had a, you? And had a bag of Doritos. No Fritos. You don't even know. I can't trust anything you say. And anymore. Funyuns. <laughs> I went all out. It was Thanksgiving. Um, Got to get your protein, yo. That's right, man. I uh, that was good. I you know we watched watched the football, watched the Lions look like a decent football team, which is weird because you know the remember like two years ago when they were like five and zero oh at the start of a season. No. Yeah. No. Um. Now it happened. It did. <laughs> um, I'll take your word for it. Yeah. No. You know it's funny because like the a lot of teams play on Thanksgiving now. Yeah. But for the longest time, the only team that played on Thanksgiving was the Detroit Lions. Yeah. And the Detroit Lions like were good. Like yeah. when they did this. Now, it is weird now because for me, the longest like time three games. Well, not even that, but like for the longest time, the tradition for me was not just the Lions playing on Thanksgiving, but the Lions losing terribly on Thanksgiving. Because like on Thanksgiving, like I'm like it's like the one day of the year I'm a huge Lions fan. Like I just love the Lions. I like I love the tradition of Detroit and Thanksgiving and this like long uh, kind of legacy thing. So they looked freaking awesome. It was it was a good game, but. Uh, yeah, you know, it was just standard uh, Thanksgiving, you know, dinner. You know, we usually eat around like two, eat pretty early. Uh, my brother... Almost always do it as a lunch, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know... My, my family as well. My brother's, uh, you know, married now and, and actually he's, he's over in Germany right now training. But like, you know, so the... My, my brother wasn't at Thanksgiving this year and, and uh, usually one set of the grandparents usually over. But it was just the the original band members, just mm-hmm. mom, dad, me and, and me and my sister. So it was kind of cool. But... Uh, yeah, it was just a standard Thanksgiving. I mean, I don't know. I haven't said this in the podcast yet. Just as like a quick thing, speaking of like family being thankful stuff, but like I'm going to be an uncle, which is pretty cool. So that's what Welcome like... Welcome to the club. Yeah. So that was kind of like the... Uh, I think one of the things we were very thankful for is the coming Bozik child. Um, <laughs> <laughs> were, uh, were you thankful that your sister Denise is so cool? <laughs> yeah. That'll earn you probably another dollar, Chris. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, she is pretty cool. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, she's like, I listened to the whole thing. <laughs> Well, she sent me. Cool. A, now she only has to listen to the first five she sent, minutes. <laughs> she sent me a text and she goes, "What episode is it?" And I was like, thinking like Gilmore Girls, and I was like, w- I just like season four, <laughs> you know, like what episode? That's uh, season four is probably my favorite season of Gilmore Girls. And she's like, "Bleh." Anyway, um, you no, know, seriously, today she was like, "I'm watching season four right now. It's probably one of my least favorite seasons." And I was like, "It's my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> you introduced me to that show and that season." Uh, no, but uh, how about you, Josh? How was your Thanksgiving? Um. Pretty quiet. Spent it with my mother and step family. Uh, ate around three ish. Watched Inside Out. Tried my hardest not to cry during it. Mm-hmm. Failed miserably. Mm-hmm. Uh, What's the go-to? It was Bing Bong. Wasn't was it? it a Bing Bong? What happens to Bing Bong? Stays in Bing Bong. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Because you just uh, yeah. yeah. Do you remember? Well, I'm who trying Bing to think. Bong that is? wasn't the only part. Oh, was it when Riley experiences sadness in class? No. Okay. But, okay, so <laughs> so you watched <laughs> Probably that of... and the parts surrounding around hockey. Yeah, which is quite prominent in that film. Yes. Um, 
Way to go, Pixar. You finally did something right and, again. And you survived. Well, <laughs> I mean, for the longest time. <laughs> finally. Yeah, like, they had hit. I, I don't think anyone would argue when I say, like, Cars 2 is, like, the low point yeah. of, like, We Pixar choose quality. to forget every Cars film uh, after Cars. All those, all those, uh, the, the, the things that are just, like, showing the, uh, the upcoming sequels to oh, yeah. the, the Pixar movies uh, is, is, is like, uh, like, it shows all the posters and then, like, a picture of, like, Adam Sandler from Billy Madison being like, yeah, and like every single one of them is like, yeah, except Cars 3. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. and people wonder if for those of you at home who are wondering why Cars keeps getting sequels, if you just, if you factor in the merchandising, Cars is the most lucrative Pixar franchise by a mile. Yeah, quit going to the movies and watching it. And buying the merchandise. And, and going to the Yeah, theme more so the merchandise. It's, and the theme park section yeah, dedicated it's, to it. It's the Michael Bay theorem. It yes. keeps making money. <laughs> yeah. I guess I mean I guess in the little there's something about cars, I think, as a little kid, you know, that's why Hot Wheels and, and yeah, all that Transformers. Yeah, micro machines. Mm-hmm. Um which don't always entail cars, but you know what I mean. Like yeah. they're always like big. But yeah. For some reason, that's the biggest far and away. Not Toy Story, which is about merchandise. No, or even The Incredibles, which really should be getting more money. Yeah, well, we're finally Please. getting a sequel to that. Yeah. Yes, um, which should hopefully do well and get another one. Yeah. And another. Well, and another. it's interesting because whenever like a Pixar director kind of like stumbles a bit in the live action field, be it Andrew Staunton with John Carter or Brad Bird with Tomorrowland, they're immediately like, I'm going to make a sequel to like the Pixar film I'm best known for. So Brad Bird's going back to The Incredibles. Andrew Staunton's going back to Finding Nemo with Finding Dory. Um, yeah, it's kind of like, uh, okay, back to the greatest hits. <laughs> I will say, uh, speaking of Pixar movies, uh, I actually did get a chance to see The Good Dinosaur, the new Pixar. and A good film? Yeah, very much so. I, I, I happened to get off work early, and I had nothing to do. Uh, at least for a couple hours, so I was like, "Oh, good dinosaur starting in a couple minutes. I'll check that out." And uh, yeah, it's actually really good. It, so it's, it's it doesn't feel like a Pixar movie, right? From what I've seen, yeah. It uh, but it definitely once you start the story, it totally like follows the same thing. I didn't think that I could you know cry again from dinosaurs after the first you know, uh, Land Before Time movie, but or we're back. Yeah. Um... More so for me, the land before time. Yeah, but yeah. No. But I can understand okay. the we're back. Yeah. yeah, the we're back more so made me terrified because of the guy with the screw eyeball. Sharp tooth didn't make me terrified, but the fucking like tree uh, star. <laughs> anyway, um, so but like uh, it it follows the the standard story of like you know uh, young uh, scrappy child brontosaurus. Uh, trying to prove that he you know he's a big kid uh loses his parents and has to like go off on an adventure on his own uh i i do want to see it yeah no it's 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 i thought they got their mojo so like i said was kind of alluding to earlier cars 2 is the low point Mm -hmm. they kind of get their mojo back with brave they kind of get their mojo back with monsters university but like inside out was like oh we're fucking like all cylinders again so i'm back on team pixar yeah and they were fucking on all cylinders. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but like, uh, so so the thing that dr- made me go gaga with this one, like I, it's been a while since I've seen a Pixar movie. Like I think Brave was actually the last one I saw. I still haven't seen Inside Out or Frozen or uh, if there's been in Monsters University, didn't see that one. Yeah, I mean, but, yeah. Uh, but so first shot is like water and I was just like floored with how good it looks. Like I was just strictly from just like an animation standpoint, which I don't know that much animation, but I do know a lot of photography stuff and video, you know, stuff. And I was just like, this is fake. Cause it looked like fucking streaming water. And like everyone that I've talked to, like, uh, you know, like, uh, adult wise, at least, uh, about the good dinosaur. Like that's usually the first thing they go toward. They, they're like the water and like all the la- like landscapes, like it all looks like just actual stuff. And then like cartoons put on top of it for all the characters, which I'm fine with. I've had a couple people that are like, yeah, they, didn't, uh, they didn't seem to mix well because they're, you know, different uh, forms of animation. I was like, so? <laughs> <laughs> Fair yeah. Enough. yeah. The, the, the characters are animated. Sorry. But yeah, no, it was just beautiful, you know, like how, how good it looked and how real, like a lot of the landscapes and stuff like that looked. And plus it was a good story. Mm. 
Oh, definitely check it out. Uh, you know, I intend to in the next couple of days. I was too busy watching Creed. But before we jump into Creed, <laughs> uh, you also saw The Night Before? I did. Uh, pretty much the night before that, I saw The Night Before, which I was very surprised about. Like, I thought it was just going to be dick and fart jokes because it's, you know, it's a Seth Rogen. But it was actually, like, a very heartwarming Christmas movie. Like, it's... it is up there with like some of my favorite, you know, Christmas movies in terms of like, just like it's a, if it weren't for the dick and fart jokes, it would be a great like family Christmas movie. Cause it's, it's all about these guys. Uh, uh, jo- Joseph Gordon Levitt is clinging on to his two friends because he doesn't have a family of his own. And he's all about Christmas. He loves Christmas, but he has no one to celebrate it with except for his two friends. And they basically just do it like a bar crawl every Christmas and like this is their last one because Seth Rogen and I always forget the other guy Anthony Mackie yes Anthony Mackie both have their own lives uh, that are starting to infringe on their ability to do this every year so he's like okay I've got to make this one the best one and you know see if I can start a new tradition with these guys that you know will make them want to come back and it's just you you feel so like uh, so empathetic for, for Joseph Gordon-Levitt this entire time he's struggling so hard uh, with his own uh, problems with like self medication, uh, as well as uh, you know trying to keep this tradition alive, that it becomes like such a sweet movie with like dick and fart jokes just sprinkled on top of it, like Parmesan cheese on a fine pizza or salad or eggnog since it's Christmas. Sure. But I don't know why you would put Parmesan cheese on eggnog. Yeah, it sounds disgusting. It's lost a bet. Why the <laughs> fuck would you do that, Josh? Lost a bet. <laughs> Gross, how, Josh. How, did you ever see Fifty Fifty? Which is the last no, time those two that's, worked that's together? A great movie. I, I yeah. meant to see that. So, and I see, I, did. I see so many like uh, you know, like gift sets and like uh, you know, scenes from it that I've been like, why haven't I seen this? Yeah, it's got your girl in it. Mm, yeah, yeah. I have it if you want to borrow. It's really I might. Good. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, because uh, I mean, that's yeah, the last time those guys worked together. Now, to go back to right before that, like I hinted at, there's Creed, the. Uh, the latest, I I can't call it a Rocky movie, really. Not in good conscience. I mean, Rocky's in it. It takes place in that continuity in that universe. Yeah, but it's shared universe. Yeah, <laughs> a ro- the Rocky verse. Mm-hmm. But it's uh, it's not Rocky's story. Like he's again, he's got a part to play. But yeah. it's all about Adonis Creed or Adonis Johnson, if you want to go by his birth name. Adonis Creed. Yeah, <laughs> Ignos- <Rex. laughs> Yeah, yeah. He fights the big bad from Jurassic World. <laughs> um, but the. Uh, I mean, it's astonishing how good that movie is. Like, yeah, man, it's apparently. It's, and did you? There is a BuzzFeed article going around. That's the movie that made Ro- the original Rocky, uh, along with Rocky Two and Rocky Four. <laughs> somehow three and five and Balboa get left out, but that's what made uh, Ryan Coogler want to become a filmmaker. Really? Well, I mean, shit. I mean, the first Rocky movie is like enough to do that. Yeah. Let alone two and four. Um. And also, you know, Balboa would have been, like, too late. Not too late, but, like, he would have been, like, in his... He would have probably his... already been going yeah. down that road. But, um... This was only, like, ten years ago? N- yeah. Almost, no, almost, no, ten, almost ten, yeah. No, but it's it's something truly, like, special, you know? And, yeah. you know, it's I'm a little bit biased towards, like, you know, and, and just anyone who loves Rocky probably would be a little bit... But it's just... I saw it twice, you know? Oh, um, you've already seen it twice? Yeah. And the first time we saw it, you know, people were, you know, reacting like it was a fight the fucking second time I saw a dude was like one of the most like religious experience you'll ever have in a movie theater, dude. Like people, like first of all, people like (laughs) it was was so fucking cool, dude. Like it was sold out. I mean, not sold out, but the front row was the only place at Centerville uh, multiplex where there was, there were, you know, no one sat in the front row. Some people, someone like, I guess bought tickets for it, sat down and was like, Nope. And got up and left (laughs) and probably got tickets somewhere else. But it was a four o'clock show on a Saturday four ten to be precise. And, I'm telling you, dude, like, people were going nuts, like, you know, cheering. And it wasn't, like, annoying, you know? Like, sometimes when people clap, you know, and just, like, shut up. Like, yeah, yeah. Just, you know. I but mean, it was I, at the right moment. I love, like, being just silent movie, but, like, I wanted to clap in this movie. You know what I mean? Like, and I knew everything that was going to happen already. Um, the second time I saw it, though, was, like, I it was a battle for me, like, not to, like, because I knew all the pacing and all the moments, and I knew what to expect, like, little things here and there. It was one of those things where, like, you, I was, you forced yourself to not go, it's coming. No, it's no, coming, I, for, coming. I, I forced myself not to like fucking cry because yeah. like it was like that thing where like your 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 uh, lip and jaw and like chin are like quivering because there's so many just like perfect moments in Creed. Like I'm definitely going to see this movie again because it's 
there it, the music in it the acting in it like the story the the essence of rocky you know like you know it's it's it, the best thing i can i can say about it like i can think of for me is like it must have been what it felt like to leave the theater in 1976 after seeing the first rocky yeah like that had to be what it feels like cuz it just just captures that moment you perfectly fe- like you know, all the award. If it wins any awards, great. You know, it's got a great score on Rotten Tomatoes, great. You know, it's got a great thing on IMDb, great. But the thing that this movie does that does better than any movie, er, any other movie I've seen this year, is it like inspires you when you leave the theater. Like you want to like be a better person. You want to run ten miles. You want to just do like you whatever you're doing. You want to be better at it after you see a Creed. Like it's it's such a such a great movie and it's like just this powerful just thing. I mean, it's 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 funny because. I think a lot of people, the same with when Balboa came out, and you know, we say Balboa, you know, the sixth one. Um, I think a lot of people are like, oh, Jesus, another Rocky movie. You know, and I could tell. Uh, well, I remember telling you when they first announced it, like when they first greenlit Creed, I was like, yo, uh, Stallone's going back for, uh, for more, and you're just like, oh, can it just fucking end already? Well, I was like, I was like <laughs> how? And I was like, well, my thing was like, uh, Balboa ended so perfectly. It's the, pr- yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then when you hear it's Creed's son, you're like, that's interesting. Um, yeah, that's interesting because again, this movie Rocky is not the star, but he definitely has his own stuff to deal with. You know, like there's definitely a Rocky thing in there. But if you go in thinking like, oh yeah, it's going to be a Rocky movie, it's going to have all the Rocky moments, um, you won't necessarily be disappointed. But that's not the point of Creed. You know, um, it's you know, and it does it. Ve- it very much follows what makes the first Rocky movie so great. It's funny because before. Um, we've been doing Christmas decorations all weekend at my parents' place, which is like a big, like there's so much inside the house going on, moving stuff around and literally like photographs of what the house looks like in different rooms to get the Thanksgiving stuff out. And cr- it's like huge. And so while we were doing that, they had a Rocky marathon one through five on um, a spike or something like that. Or one of those channels, you yeah. know, and um, we basically, you know, walking in and out, like watched one and two, like we had enough time to do that, which was great because my sister, and my mom had seen it, but my sister was able to see a lot of moments that were going to be recalled in Creed. And so this isn't, here's something that's not like a huge, it's in the trailer with the chicken. So for example, she got to see Rocky be trained trying to catch the chicken. So when that pays off in Creed, like she, I can even hear her next to me like laughing, like that was a big payoff. Like she knew that, oh, that's what, you know, Rocky remembers that from his mentor Mick and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And there's like way other big things, but like, yeah, if if even if you don't like, even if you think like Rocky, you don't like the Rocky movies, or you think why would they make another you know Rocky movie? Just see Creed, man. Like it's something really cool. I personally think like you don't necessarily have to watch all the Rocky movies. No. This one stands. I mean, there's definitely a bigger payoff. Yeah. If you watch Rocky's one through Balboa, mm-hmm. but it's a, it's a standalone film. Uh, yeah. And apparently he pitched uh, he pitched the film to to Stallone while he was working on Fruitvale Station. Oh really? And they wanted they were like this is a really good script. Yeah. Cuz he wrote it on spec and they were like but have you done anything else? And he's yeah. like I'm kind of in the middle of this thing. I've also got some short student films at USC and they're like let's see how that turns yeah. out and then it, it I think he also uh you know cuz he talked about how much him and his father loved the Rocky movies and that yeah. struck a chord with with Stallone as well. And if like if I can't sell you talking about it, let me try it for another way. Stallone like owns Rocky, not like in like a, a, a company sense, or whatever. Like this is his thing. Like he lives and breathes his character. He didn't just a lot of people don't realize this. He didn't just star yeah. as Rocky Balboa. He wrote Rocky Balboa. Like he wrote every single movie in the series, but yeah. not this one. Yeah, he directed all but the two, b- all but two, all but the first film in Rocky Five. Yeah, so and it's so very much his best creation. Exactly, and so for him to okay a movie that he hasn't uh, of a character he's not, that he loves that he's not writing or directing. There has Tommy to be. He's never written it. There has to be something there. There's something there. Like you know, it's it's it. You know, Stallone is no dummy with with Rocky. You know, and so that's his. Like I think he's more willing to take chances with Rambo because Rambo is never his. Mm-mm. He. I mean, uh, you know, it's funny. He's kind of molded it to be his. Yeah. In a way, but what we know is Rambo now. Yeah. Not so much the book, but what we know is Rambo now is definitely like Stallone. Yeah, because the David Morrell Rambo is not the same Rambo in the movies, you know? Um, and I think the only, like the, the uh, David Morrell was pleased with Rambo for, he was like, it was a clo- he, he's even said, I think that's the closest to his character in the novels, even over first blood. Yeah. But uh, yeah, man, do yourself a favor and see Creed. Yeah. The fight sequences. Cause as much as we can like, just go gaga over the emotional core of this film, let's be honest. People are going to see this movie for the fights. Mm-hmm. The fights are like the best fights. 
Dude, this second fight where he's fighting this character named Leo, it's a two-round fight. You follow him, Chris, you like this. You, he fo- you follow him from the locker room to the end of the second round without a cut. It's pretty sexy. Two rounds of fighting. Yeah. 15 like minutes in- each? No. Okay. Uh, three minutes. Oh. In, like intense. I was about to say. That's well, like I don't know how long. On around. I guess that's a, that's a standard time. I don't know if that's three the case. Three minutes is a standard box. Yeah. But, uh, uh, but, I mean, dude. And it's not, it's not like... Uh, one hit, two. It's like full on. There was a lot of shit going on. Camera's right in the action. Yeah, the too. camera is in the ring with them. It's astounding. That was one of the things I was looking forward to most watching again. Was was that just no cut? The final fight's I great hope, too. I hope final I hope fight's like great. One too. of the next times I go into work, it'll line up. Like that's the reason why I haven't uh, gotten a chance to see Creed yet. Is usually like I get you know cut from work mm-hmm. like half an hour into Creed, uh, and like the next showing isn't until way later when I have to be at the bar. Yeah. Well, it's great, too, because I've seen people, like, talking about it on social media, Twitter, Facebook, or whatever, and they're like, it's sold out. I have to go to the next show and it's sold out. Like, you know, it's this is it's really awesome that this movie's doing so well. Yeah. Second only, I think, second only to The Hunger Games this uh, this weekend. You mm-hmm. saw that movie, too. I did, yeah. My sister and I have had, like, a little, like, brother-sister date since the first one came out that yeah. we go to see it. Uh, it's close to opening day, if not opening day. as, as uh, Does it need to be two parts? No. <laughs> That's what God, I keep no. hearing. <laughs> no, I mean, if I had to rank them, for me, it'd be two, one, four, three. Um, three is the, one of the most just boring messes of a movie. So, like, I hope this kills the splitting things into two parts because people or are, three parts in the case of the Hobbit. Yeah, because pe- well, I mean, you know, <laughs> that, that killed itself. Yeah, not having Man of Steel attached to the front of that killed it for me. <laughs> um, I'm still bitter about that <laughs> shit. Yeah. And I can watch the Man of Steel trailer on YouTube whenever I want. Um, you can watch the film, too. Uh, no, 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 no. It's, it's a bigger payoff for two minutes than watching a two-hour movie. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's what I okay. keep telling the ladies. Yeah. And I love Superman. But <laughs> da, 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 da. Although, by the t- it, well, this will be useless, fucking useless to anyone who's listening to this. I'm going to post. But on Monday, for you guys, if you don't know, Gotham, during Gotham, they're going to have new footage of Batman v Superman. Oh. They're going to play during it, which would be fun Maybe to see. Maybe I'll actually start watching Gotham again. Well, I'm taping Gotham so I can watch that. Because I'm be watching Supergirl because she's fighting Red Tornado, yeah. um, shittiest looking Red Tornado. Right, yeah. that's yeah. what I was. Thinking. Here's the thing, and I'm, I'm a lot of, I've seen a lot of people post this, and I thought this too the first time I saw it. It's got to be a prototype. It's got to be a prototype. You know what I mean? Prototype it's clearly, of a man with a red painted face. <laughs> prototype, <laughs> prototype. Because it's clearly going out of fucking control. Like it's gonna have to, you know, they're gonna have to. Blah, 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 blah. And even if it wasn't a prototype, they're got They're gonna. Fu- they have to fucking. But fix it. Uh, again, guys, what what network I mean, is it, it on? It took CBS. CBS. It it took them like three seasons to give uh, Arrow a good suit. So. Exactly. So wait, baby wait, steps. CBS wait. has a higher budget than the CW. That's true. <laughs> wait, but that doesn't mean they have better taste. Are you guys <laughs> saying you, Chris? You guys are saying season Look four Arrow suit is better than season one through three Arrow suit? I actually haven't seen season four's Arrow suit because okay. I haven't that's watched a single wrong. episode of Arrow. I enjoyed the evolution of it. Like I mean, the... it took them three seasons to get a mask. Yeah, it's funny. Right when the right I when didn't got... even really. Do it that on his own. He was just gifted it. Yeah, Barry mm-hmm. threw it at him. Hey, yeah. I made this out of rubber. Um, Somehow I have a perfect uh, fucking mold, uh, mold your of face. your face. I'm not a creeper though. <laughs> I finally, I finally really finished fast. that first season of Flash. Yeah, it's a juicy that finale. I afford, uh, so you almost cried during Creed. Yeah, you did cry during Inside Out. I yep. cried during the good. Dinosaur. You cried during the good dinosaur. I cried during the season one finale of Flash. Yeah, it's the spoilers if you haven't seen the first season. Of the Flash, it's on Netflix. It's on get Net- around to it, yeah. and we've also Sam spoiled it on here. It. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Skip, skip around like thirty seconds, maybe a minute. Honestly, so he's like, and I think you guys will all agree with me. So he makes it back to to his childhood, makes it back, and just mm. the the look that his I guess future self gives him is just like, oh, that little like just a little just like, no, yeah. you can't. And then yeah. like he has to, he's he forces himself to wait outside while his mother gets killed, and then you know he's talking to his to his mother. You know he reveals himself, and he's just like, look. You know we're gonna be okay, and it's just yeah. well. She when, the, when she's like, "You look like somebody I know." You look like my father. Yeah, and he, you know, and he's like, "No, it's Barry," and it's just like you know, he's just like everything's gonna be okay, and it's like you know, I've kind of imagined those conversations myself. Yeah. It's like, look, I'm, everything turns out okay. Um, you know, even without you, and it's just like, yeah, it, it's the moment where he realizes that he has to give up the thing he wants to. You know, being a hero means you sometimes you have to give up the things you want the most, even. Even your dreams, just to do what's right. Yeah. And that, yeah. yeah. But also from a comic book standpoint, uh, how they resolve the Flashpoint 
crisis, mm. they do the same thing with that too. Yeah, that so. was yeah. that was actually the thing that pissed me off the most about the Flashpoint animated movie was that they got rid of that scene. Yeah, and I was like, no, that's that's the whole fucking point of this comic. That's the book. payoff. That's that's like the emotional like thing. Like, I do you know? Like, I I couldn't even. I, I just like stopped watching. I was like, this is this is bullshit. Yeah, what they what they I guess surmised as the emotional payoff was <laughs> was Barry giving the letter from Thomas Wayne to Bruce which to be which, fair yeah, is that was uh, it's a pay, there's a payoff there but, but it's a it's, flashpoint at the end of the day is a flash story yeah you got to make even, it about batman and yeah. the name yeah, yeah that's yeah, the right, entire right. reason why that alternate reality is created because he saves his mom it causes that mm-hmm. massive divergence mm-hmm. but yeah i mean just uh, I, I didn't expect it to end on a cliffhanger mm-hmm. i will say that it ends Smallville season one style with him running in a fucking tornado. Yeah, getting <laughs> yeah. sucked into Earth 2, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I'll I'll let you guys know in about a year <laughs> yeah. when I finally watch season two. <laughs> yeah. But no, it was, uh, my God. Like, I enjoy Arrow, even season three, which I don't think is as bad as people make it out to be. Still not great. Still not great, but it's still enjoyable. But, uh my God, Flash just smokes the shit out of mm-hmm. Arrow. All three seasons combined. Yeah. Man. And now I have to watch Gotham. And that's going to feel like, after Flash, I feel like it's going to feel like a mm. chore. Yeah. <laughs> it, to, to be totally honest, like I was always like Gotham's main supporter, or at least I feel like I was Gotham's main supporter on our show here. Yeah. Uh, and I haven't watched it in like a month and a half. I've been watching all now continuously. Flash, bright, sunny, cheerful, very colorful, arrow, super dark, moody. I have to be extremely serious. Gotham, eh, what the fuck? We'll just do this. It's like just kind of seat of their pants, kind of just ridiculous over-the-top storytelling. Yeah, Yeah, and just the way how all the scenes are shot, the gunshots are extremely Mm -hmm. loud, the cars are extremely loud, there's a whole lot of blood spray everywhere for no apparent reason most of the time. That's like selling the show. Yeah, (laughs) like, uh, like I still, like, all the things that you're, you're speaking about, like, I still enjoy those about Gotham, but... I already have like two things like uh, uh, that are higher priority on my DVR, and I only have you know I I, I can't record a third on my DVR that, that that air at the same time, and like so I have to go watch it on on demand, and I it it's just it, it's 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 an enjoyable show, but I haven't gotten around to going through all the motions to get to on demand to watch it well like jake yeah. uh i take the lethal weapon series okay. your two main stars of it their okay. their personalities yes. and then put them into the leads of gotham you're mm-hmm. still selling it to him and yeah, that is right. gotham yeah i i mean i do have a podcast all about lethal weapon so this is selling me more towards yeah it's the basically <laughs> the lethal weapon leads being let loose into gotham city if martin if if martin riggs and roger murtaugh were in gotham it would be the greatest show of all time yeah also well, they, do they some, are they do they're some, just called riggs. different characters and they're they're both riggs, white the back. Riggs. they do something riggs. they do something batman could never do they'd actually clean up gotham city first Ooh. of all because they'd kill some yeah it's because they kill everyone they'd, kill, they'd kill some motherfuckers and they'd have no, some fun while everyone. doing it. Like, they don't jail any of the minor characters. Riggs. Riggs. Riddler, Riddler and Joker on the loose again. I'm too old for this shit. <laughs> not a cop. Not tonight, Raj. Not tonight. But, uh, man, yeah. I was So I'm sitting there, like, weeping like a crazy person mm-hmm. during the Flash finale. And my sister, who is spectacular... Nobody can spoil a mood quite like her. Nobody does it better. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, she's just like, Flash couldn't save his mom. And I had this like whole thing where I was like, like in my head where I'm like, no, it would alter the timelines and everything and everything. And, but I could only muster a simple no. Like that was how like, like wrecked that, that scene had me. But also I have to believe there was a version where he did because – the one Barry that he sees already there fighting knows. Well, yeah, it was the one with the the white emblem, like the original yeah. Barry proper timeline. So I got to imagine there was one where he did do it and realized I got to stop a version of myself I know is going to come back and try and do this again. Well, either that or like that Barry is also way further down in the timeline. You know, fighting uh, with um, with um, reverse flash. Yeah, reverse flash. 
uh, and he just might have been able to deduce like, no, this needs to happen. You know, like he might have just been able to figure out because you know the dominoes fall where they you know they they did. Uh, because like Derek even and the dominoes. Yep. Let uh, me look. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Sorry, my mom prefers the, the acoustic version. It's a good one. Uh, but uh, but like they even comment about it. Like you know they look at the uh, the future newspaper and they're like, oh Barry, you got a you got a different envelope. I do like that yeah. salmon yeah. Our, salmon our buddy Cisco uh, <laughs> saw, sees the white emblem. He's like. Wait, do I create that because I saw it, or do I create that because I did? Or do I have to create that now because I saw? It? And like he the just, self fulfilling paradox. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Cisco, Cisco. Paradox? Yeah, but yeah. Uh, how is Cisco doing, guys? Good. Uh, he, he seemed to enjoy his barbecue. <laughs> <laughs> the until, uh, man. until he realized he was being watched by I two hope he nerds. Tells, <laughs> I hope he, I I didn't I didn't stare. I he didn't ho- catch me. <laughs> I hope he tells his friends that story like we do it makes me just sound like the biggest fucking weirdo because like it, no to I, be fair every story I, I tell about you you're the it's biggest true, it's true it's true I didn't mean to like lock eyes with a dude but like I was like because that was Sam was like yeah I was like I think it is and I looked and then I remember like you hadn't really watched The Flash and like I came downstairs and you're watching one of the episodes you're like dude that was totally Cisco I was like okay <laughs> you know there's a part of me that just might have just been some random dude who was like what's up yeah in some alternate timeline we would have had a split a drink with him Oh shit! Where's the? Damn it! That we have, to, so we have to run back, but yeah. then, but we, then, future versions of us will already be there at the bar and wave our fingers and yeah. say, "No, no, no!" <laughs> and then we slowly, we slowly close the door, just sobbing. Yeah, and then I'll weep like a crazy person, and yeah. then my sister will spoil the movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but uh, there was another show that you know, of course, I finished. And I think we've all finished now. Originally, it was just Josh because he burns through television shows like Kindling, yeah. but uh, we've all finally um, gotten through Jessica Jones. Yes, yes, we did. Um, Doug Jones's sister. Yes, uh, <laughs> or daughter, but um, it could be. It's. I mean, it's good. I think it starts out better than Daredevil, but as a whole, I think Daredevil is still the better Marvel Netflix show. It was definitely uh, Daredevil was definitely more my speed, uh, but not to uh, not to take anything away from Jessica Jones. Yeah, no, it's it was still amazing. I I still thoroughly enjoyed it. I I think my biggest issue with it was that right from Jump Street, it was just Jessica Jones versus Kilgrave. Like, and there were, there were like, no real, like... There's Nuke. The, he, Only he for, did, like, an episode yeah, and a half. The, like, like, there's no... There, there, uh, I would have liked... Like, it, with how... Um, like, it was, it was only 13 episodes, so only, like, about half a normal, like, television seer, uh, season. But it still felt... Like it was longer than that, just because like it uh, or it, it still felt like it was stretched uh, a little too thin. Like I would have sure. liked, I would have liked her to have like some more uh, distractions. Like there were like side stories that she did, like you know, uh, spying on um, uh, uh, Trinity's wife. Yeah, uh, and uh, <laughs> because I can't remember character names, <laughs> <Right>. Trinity. <laughs> yeah, help. <laughs> yeah, uh, and uh, you know, and the, um. Trying to save, uh, what's her name from uh, going to p- jail? Um, yeah, it's, w- not, it's not very subtle if you think about but it. But also yeah. though, the fact uh, that the character she's trying to save that's tied to her own redemption is named Hope. How yeah. many? Like this is just for yeah. Devil's what is Ad- she an X Man? <laughs> this is for Devil's Advocate's sake. How many people does Jessica Jones let die to save Hope? Like she's like, I'm done having people's blood on my hands, and then like three more people die, and she's like, I'm done having blood on my hands, and like three more people die, and she's like, but seriously, guys, I'm done. And then it Nuke, isn't, yeah, it isn't and Nuke is like motherfucker kill him and she's like no and then nukes like kill him and then she's like okay well also, what was you know, d- yeah, it, was it was after hope yeah yeah spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen jessica jones yeah but you should already know yeah <laughs> here we are talking about it it's kind of gonna yeah. it's the death of hope that's like the hope that she that the, is lost yeah. sorry hope i mean hope is lost yeah, yeah, yeah that's where she's just like fuck him i'm gonna kill david Tennant. Yes, actual David Tennant, not Kilgrave. <laughs> so hard. <laughs> Murder corpse. Yeah, but also looking at the side of how she used to be a hero, or at least honestly tried to be a hero, and then she let... Um... Kilgrave? No. I don't want to call her Patsy, but I will if I can't remember what Trish? the fuck... Trish. Trish Walker? Trish keeps trying Trish, to convince uh, her, look, you can be the hero still. You can take the hero's path. And for a while, Here's Jessica Jimmy. tries to believe, okay, fine, I will just uh, knock them the fuck out, break some legs, I will take the Batman approach, but I won't kill people. 
to get to Kilgrave and then actually capture him, put him on trial, and do the whole nine yards. She, I mean, well, she the, legitimately tries. Yes, the, the big, and the that's big why she keeps being like, no, I'm not going to kill Kilgrave. I'm not going to do this. And you guys are like, oh, look, three more people died, and the, she didn't kill him. The big motivation for her was that she wanted to not just, like, save Hope's life, but also, like... And make, clear her make, name. Yeah, clear her name, which... The, to her to her credit, she could not do if Kilgrave was dead. He this needed to he needed to like actually like take uh you know uh, stand trial. Yeah, exactly. And so I get where she was going, but yeah. like no, it all makes yeah, sense. But yeah. like it's, it's just fucking I, weird. I would have liked a monster of the week episode, at least one. Well, there you were know. a few PI cases thrown in there, like the I've got ninety nine friends. The uh, bitch ain't one. Hit me. Uh, Spying on Luke Cage yeah, but, to but the, but the, prove that the affair was going on. But the, the, those weren't episodes. Those were just like, uh, you know, subplots. subplots. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, again, there was a very defined villain for this one right from when she found out Kilgrave was alive or, and in town. Th- here, here's here's my thing. Uh, th- uh, th- if, they, if they wanted it to be, oh, well, clearly they did, want it to be one overarching villain. Like, Kilgrave was the villain of the season. Right. Didn't need to reveal that it was Kilgrave in the first episode. I would have liked a slow burn on that. And, like, maybe, like, the third or fourth episode be like, oh, shit. Now I recognize why all this is familiar. I think the big, uh, pacing-wise, to compare it to Daredevil, because it's the most easiest comparison to make. Mm-hmm. Um Daredevil's all about building this confrontation. When we don't see between, you know, Daredevil and Kingpin. We don't see Kingpin till what, the end of like the second or third episode? Yeah. Where third he's just looking there. at that stupid white painting. Yeah. Just like <laughs> it reminds me of my I mean, he the big bad's always referenced as a oh, we can't say his name. Yeah. Whereas Jessica Jones, there is the existing already established history between mm-hmm. the two that we as a viewer, you know, accumulate, accumulate, accumulate. I will agree that the pacing on that's a little weird. What I co- personally wish is that it kind of maintained the noir tone that it establishes at the beginning. Mm. Um, whereas Daredevil kind of flirts with noir. Jessica Jones is like, Jessica Jones takes it into a you know quick motel for a quickie. But the um, I I wanted that. It kind of it gets it goes off the rail for me like two thirds of the way through the season. There's a there's that episode where she's got Kilgrave mm-hmm. in like a containment area, and which after is, she's finally captured him, yeah. Um, and he's like in the soundproof room. And then of course that, I mean, you still got three more episodes, so that's going to get fucked. But, um, <laughs> yeah, <I> know. <laughs> and then it goes into like weird, like kind of like almost torture porn with the episode yeah. that follows yeah. Pr- pruny feet, man, and getting zapped. And then like, he's like, here's my, here's my parents. Oh no, one of them's dead. Someone's yeah. cut a cord. And I don't, you know, I, I mean, I liked it. Like, like you were saying, like, you know, I liked it overall. Um, episode eight was my favorite. Um, Which is right before he gets captured. Yeah, episode eight tackles some shit I've never seen a superhero anything tackle before. Where Jessica Jones is like almost a ghost of Christmas past, where she's like, "Look what you you could you could have been a fucking hero, dude." Like she forces him to save that family, and I was like, "Oh my god!" And then she's like a fucking hoss at the end. She's like, "This is yeah, what Jessica huh. would do." That Snip. was that was a great episode. Yeah. Um. And like you know, we were saying with even with Daredevil, you know, it's funny. Like you know, you're waiting for the suit. He gets it on, and for me, like that last episode is the weakest episode of Daredevil because you're like, "Oh, that's right, it's a superhero show." Yeah, and in comparisons, Daredevil it's just a goofy red suit. Yeah. Daredevil didn't really tackle also any enough with the parkour. themes that have never really not been tackled in a superhero show of or even film style, and Jessica Jones tackled themes that you really haven't ever seen brought to the genre and outside of like very certain comic runs, like Jessica. Jones alias, is, yeah. yeah, like Alias specifically. The Pulse being the other one. Right, and All then... Else. Although that wasn't a comic book, but... Yeah. But so, I do like how it kind of like... It, it's... Addresses very real, serious... That's what I like about things. it. It it brings up stuff that I don't think any other show... Would have the balls or, to do. Superhero mm-hmm. or otherwise. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, very few just general shows will do it, except for like a very special episode. Yeah, it's <laughs> a, one, a quick one-off, Sweeps so they don't have to. Week has a, yeah, yeah I but, will say there's a lot of imagery, and and speaking of what the stuff is, ta- you know, tackling certain things, like it, it reminded me very much of like the Elizabeth, like Girl of the Dragon Tattoo stuff. Oh like yeah, there's some shot where she's like sitting on the desk, Salander. sitting on the desk with like her leather jacket and the hood on, and oh, just like you yeah. know, just straight out of the, which is a good thing because those. Yeah. It's a, it's a great series, but yeah. um, the, no, the cinematography uh, was on point and and uh, and whatnot. And the, how stoked am I for a Luke Cage yeah, like, yeah, series yeah. now? Yeah. I remember I tweeted, I was like, 
I think Luke Cage might be like my favorite MCU motherfucker because like that's the fight scene that he has in episode the two. The first I one, think, yeah. The where he's first just like, fight. He's like, ugh, like tired and just. I was. I mean, I was already sold in the show because I was digging it. Yeah. There's no adrenaline for him because he knows nothing can hurt him. Yeah. And they're just drunk and like it even has like that. You know, I'm not a super Luke Cage. Like I don't know a lot about him, but like I know unbreakable that, skin. Well, I mean, I know that. <laughs> uh, I said it. Uh, they know. they did lightly touch on that yeah. in, in, I mean, in I play, Jessica Jones. I mean, most of what I vote is like from Web of Shadows, you know, and uh, some like old like oh, comics ever back in the day. But like... Uh, Heroes for Hire. Yeah, but like the idea that he still like wants to help people, you know, like, you know, like the, 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 even when he's like smacking around these drunk guys, he's like, look, you're going to forget this happened. I'm going to forget this happened. You're going to go home. Like, you know, it's not like, I'm going to fucking break all your bones and come after your family. You know, not this like vengeful motherfucker. And, like, you know, certain rip moments, off your head and shit down your neck. There's, there's certain moments where he's vengeful for vengeful reasons that are, you know, warranted. But, uh, yeah, I mean, he did a great job. Mike you know? Coulter, yeah. yeah. Really, really good job. Uh, and, I'm yeah, I'm definitely excited for Luke Cage. Yeah. And yeah, then, which makes me wonder if his series is going to be what leads to him having that ability. Uh, we might get flashbacks, kind of like yeah, how we got might, flashbacks yeah. with this. And we had, if, if you think about it, we had flashbacks with Daredevil. Though only like one or two would stick, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and then I mean the 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 you know they have the whole episode where they talk you know the Kingpin or, origin and stuff. These flashbacks. Well, I, I I would argue that Daredevil almost felt like more like a rise of Kingpin than a rise yeah. of Daredevil. Oh, 100%. I, I think we went off on that at length when we talked about it a couple months ago too. It's mm-hmm. very much yeah. the yeah, it's very much the rise of Kingpin. But uh, uh, uh um. One thing that I did love, speaking of like flashbacks and stuff like that, was that I loved the I did love the storytelling on how it there wasn't just hours of forced exposition. Like, you know, like as something came up in the story, you kind of got like a snippet of like, oh yeah, no, this is uh you know, already already been here. Like, you know, uh the the you weren't uh, just inundated with uh, how Jessica Jones used to be a hero or what Patsy's, you know, means, you know, like you just saw people running up and singing the Patsy uh, theme song. And it wasn't until like episode, what, seven deep into it. Yeah. Yeah. That, that you even got, actually, I think it was even later than that. Like episode 10. Well, it was like when she flashes back to herself in like the hospital where it's like playing on the TV. Yeah. 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 It wasn't until then that you actually like see, Really, what like there were hints of it, you know, like you hear things like child star and and there's uh, like a poster TV earlier yeah. on when she goes but, into her mom's or Patsy's mom's office. Yeah, but uh, Trisha's mom's office. But yeah, it's not. Yeah, it's not until way late that you actually see. Oh, she was like a Hannah Montana. Right. Got it. Yeah. Oh, and then also with how the uh, new MCU has been trying to put a somewhat realistic or at least believable sense in these abilities and things. Uh, Kilgrave, the Purple Man, a not being. Pure purple. I'm okay with that. Yeah, they and do tease it a couple times. They do. Yeah. I was hoping that when he suits. took the full on thing, I was, was expecting gonna, that was too. Like a side effect, not like because you like see, ever. well, you see his veins like start to turn, bastard. and then yeah. yeah, that yellow bastard, and then like other there are other moments where like he's like ready to charge up, and he's just like you purple. see like some purple veins. Yeah, like, and oh, then shit. also B, it not being pure mind control of like a psionic sense, but I um virus. Yeah, mm-hmm. like he just sprays bacteria into the air. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of like uh, Spider Woman with pheromones, right? Um, yeah, I mean, I think that's and I, I'm. It's. I feel like they're exp- <laughs> they're aren't they exploring that quite a bit with uh, Agents of Shield, Josh? In humans, yes, no. Well, <laughs> the, they have the Terrigen Mist, which has always been what unleashes the uh, the alien DNA in, in an in human, human that yeah. makes them Terrigenesis. Yeah, the, the, they, they've always Very had genesis. that part of it. So, no but this, they, they kind of just borrow that and adapt it for the Purple Man to make him a little more believable as uh, outside of saying so, he can just telekinesisly say, you're going to do this, and then you do it. So is he uh, inhuman? No, no. They <laughs> proved that it was just a uh, experiment oh, right. to yeah, they, save yeah. their child's life. Maybe that, they stole the, the, the Terrican... Terrigen mist. Yeah. Well, if they had, it would have killed him unless he had been an inhuman. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe. Mm-hmm. Well, they never show in any of the footage him going through the chrysalis cocoon. Yeah. But I mean, there, yeah. there's plenty. There's <laughs> plenty of things they didn't show about his childhood. Yeah. I mean, again, didn't see him go through puberty, but I assume he did. Again, you know, we. I, I think it's safe to say we all dug the show. Yes. Absolutely. But would you? Okay. I, I don't think you've chimed in on this yet. Jessica Jones or Daredevil. Jessica Jones. 
Oh, okay. I, I feel like so far the series have been ratcheting themselves up of what each one before them has done. So I'm feeling like by the time we get to Iron Fist, it's just going to be balls to the wall, batshit crazy. That's the one I'm looking the most forward for. And too. apparently the one that they're having the E3. hardest E3. time <laughs> making happen. Yeah. Like, I figure we'll and... actually get the Defenders movie minus him <laughs> before we see his series. Perhaps. Are we are we getting uh, Luke Cage next? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, they're filming that now um, as, as well as the second season of Daredevil. You think Nicolas Cage is going to be in it? He should. <laughs> as a kind of a nod. Like, yeah. That's where I got the name. It's like, great. <laughs> I have cool. unbreakable skin. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it's going to be a shame that we get to see wouldn't him. Great? I don't know anything about Luke Cage, but wouldn't it be great if Nicolas Cage played the like the, the arch nemesis? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. It would. We're not going to get it, but <laughs> it would be good. Yeah, who would his nemesis be? I, I don't know much about him or the sense. heroes for hire, so I don't well, know. Well, you've got a. I think the one, the big one is. Mr. Glass. Uh, Cottonmouth. <laughs> what a ridiculous name. <laughs> I Please, Sam, enlighten us. Why is he called Cottonmouth? Because he's a stoner. He's part of. Uh, I think he's associated with the Serpent Squad. Oh, God, those people. But. In this, I think they're just making him kind of a gang boss of like Harlem that goes up against Luke Cage. Oh, okay, that makes there. sense. Yeah, so you guys will you guys will see it. Hopefully, maybe maybe I'll be wrong. Maybe I'll be right. Well, I don't have any insider knowledge. Guys. Just, it, <laughs> so it probably be, won't be Nicolas Cage. No, it will no, be I a little cast weird it. to get him and an Iron Fist show separately and not have like a Heroes for Hire. Well, they both had their own series before they became Heroes for Hire. Yeah, yeah sure. but the big thing is that's like complaining about Green Lantern not being on uh, Green Arrow. Yeah. Now the big thing is like we know that they haven't cast an Iron Fist yet, if it, yet officially. It would be cool though if like the, Scott Eastwood. Yeah, well that mm-hmm. would be fucking cool. But or or you know, um, <laughs> Nicholas Cage. But uh, <laughs> if we get to see uh, you know Danny Rand on Luke Cage first, maybe or maybe like a hint of like Rand Corp or something. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. yeah. So, that we could definitely get. Yeah, because like you know what you were saying earlier, like a last week's episode or whatever. Uh, you know Trinity. Hogarth. Her it name's Hogarth, Hogarth, people. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, it sounds like a character from Game, Game of Thrones. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's um, all she can say, guys. <laughs> is, uh, and yet she runs a law firm. <laughs> Danny Rand's lawyer. So. Yeah. Yeah, like in the comics. We'll see, man. We'll see. But yeah, check out... No, check out Jessica Jones. Check out uh, if you haven't seen The Flash. First off, sorry for spoiling it, but hey, it's on Netflix. Um, and there's hey, there's the Good Dinosaur, and watch fucking Creed until your eyeballs roll out. And I found life. <laughs> Rocky's sick. I found, I life. found life. It's the trailer, guys. And the night before. <laughs> and the night before. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I said it, but I wanted to make sure there was clean audio of it too. <laughs> Good call. Uh, but yeah, you guys got anything to add before we sign off? No. No. Good. This has been another installment of Catching Up. I'm Sam. I'm Chris. I'm Jake. I'm Josh. And we'll see you guys next week. Thank you very much. Good night, Eric Bana. <sighs> Damn, that beat was dope.